and welcome to Online Advantage. I'm Lisa Farmer and I'm your business professor. Today we're going to discuss the four degrees of competition. The four different degrees of competition that we will be taking a look at today are first, perfect competition. This one actually rarely ex exists, but it is important to talk about. Second, we're gonna look at monopolistic competition. Third, we're gonna discuss oligopoly. And very last, we will talk about monopolies. So let's get going. What do we mean by perfect competition? It sounds like we have perfect competition all the time in many different industries, but in actuality, it's pretty rare. Perfect competition is going to be characterized, first of all, by a large number of participants in the market. And even more importantly, in a situation with perfect competition, our products are absolutely identical. That's the reason why we actually rarely see perfect competition. So let's just try to think of an example. I'm gonna think maybe apples. So let's say we're shopping for Granny Smith apples. The Granny Smith apples produced by one farmer might appear to be identical to the Granny Smith apples produced by another farmer. So that's a great example of a situation where we might actually have perfect competition. Another characteristic of perfect competition is going to be free entry and exit into the market. What do we mean by that? Let's go back to our apple example. If you just happen to have a Granny Smith apple tree growing in your yard, and I do as well, then there is no difficulty for us to enter the apple market. So that's what we mean by free entry and exit into the market. As well as another characteristic of perfect competition is going to be perfect knowledge of prices and technology. So what we're assuming there is that I don't have any super secret trade secrets uh, in, uh, in comparison to the farmer down the street. Lastly, another characteristic of perfect competition is going to be the assumption of no transportation costs. Meaning, we are assuming that my apple would cost you exactly the same as the other apple down the street because you don't have to pay additional transportation costs to get my apple in lieu of another. So those are some of the major characteristics of perfect competition. Next, let's take a look at monopolistic competition. In reality, this is the most typical type of competition that we see in industries, is what we call monopolistic competition. Monopolistic competition is going to be characterized still by a large number of participants in the market. However, the main difference is that their goods or services can be somewhat differentiated. And what do we mean by differentiated? Well, they have something that's different or unique to their product. So for this level of competition, I would like to use toothpaste as an example. We know that there are a lot of different toothpaste brands in the market, and they're very, very similar. However, most toothpaste, toothpaste brands tend to distinguish themselves by some specific characteristic. Maybe they're extra whitening toothpaste, maybe they're a mint flavor, maybe they're bubblegum flavor, but that's what we mean by uh, differentiation of the products. And because toothpaste manufacturers tend to differentiate their products to some degree, they also have some control over pricing. Just think about it from a perspective, generally speaking, you would pay more for whitening toothpaste than you would be willing to pay for generic toothpaste. So that's what we mean by the manufacturers do have some control over pricing. The last characteristic that I want to talk to you about today in regards to monopolistic competition is going to be low barriers to entry and exit. Whereas with perfect competition, we talked about free barriers. There were no barriers at all. In fact, I had an apple tree growing in my yard already. With monopolistic competition, the barriers to entry and exit in the market tend to be pretty low, meaning it's not super expensive to get into the market. A great example that I like to use um, when it comes to low barriers of entry is if I wake up tomorrow morning and decide that I want to be in the window washing business. It's not gonna cost me a lot. I'm not gonna have to jump through a lot of hoops. I'm gonna go to Home Depot, I'm gonna get a bucket, I'm gonna get a, a squeegee, I'm gonna get some soap, and boom, I'm in the business. So that's what we mean by low barriers to entry. And those are the major characteristics of monopolistic competition. Next, we're gonna take a look at an oligopoly and the characteristics that an oligopoly possesses. So in an oligopoly, we have very few participants in the market. A great example of this is going to be airplane industry. So if I decide tomorrow that I wanna buy an airplane, I have a few suppliers that I can buy from, maybe McDonnell Douglas, 
maybe Boeing, but there aren't as many uh, airplane manufacturers, for instance, as there are toothpaste manufacturers. So another characteristic of an oligopoly is going to be, it could be either homogenous products or heterogeneous, meaning maybe they're exactly the same, maybe they're not. However, because we have few participants in this industry, they tend to work together to some degree. So that's what we mean by interdependence of the participants in the industry. That really is a characteristic that results from the fact that there are only a few. They really kind of have to work together a lot of the times. And lastly, with an oligopoly, there are going to be some significant barriers to entry into this market. And that's why, for instance, in the airplane industry, airplanes are very expensive, capital intensive to produce. So for that reason, just naturally, there aren't that many manufacturers of airplanes. So that's what we mean by some barrier to entry. The last form of competition that we're gonna to discuss today is going to be what we call a monopoly. We've all played the game monopoly, you're familiar with that term to some degree, but let's uh, dive a little deeper into what we mean by a monopoly. In a, in a monopoly, typically we are only gonna have one supplier in the industry. And that in of itself can present some problems because they have no competition. So for that reason, the monopolist controls the price. And I want to um, interject here that oftentimes that's where governments will kind of intervene to some degree to make sure that the monopoly um, is fairly priced and that kind of thing. The industry is following fair pricing practices. Why do monopolies result? Oftentimes because of the huge barriers to entry into the market. A great example of this is going to be the utility industry. It is very capital intensive and cost prohibitive to um, to lay utility lines and that kind of thing. So for that reason, once one company has done it, it would be very difficult to just go ahead and run your own utility lines, just in case someone might choose your company instead of theirs. So that's what we mean by monopoly. I hope this video has helped you and thanks for watching. Please click on the Advantage logo to subscribe to our channel.